Hello students. Economics as a subject starts in CBSE in class 9. Now before I start with the chapter of economics, I would like to explain to my students what is economics. If we define economics in simple and concise way, then it is the study of how the society uses its limited resources. Economics is a social science that deals with the production, distribution and consumption of goods and services. The story of village Palampur. This is chapter number one, economics, CBSC class nine. As the name of the chapter suggests, the story of village Palampur, my main question is, what is the aim of this chapter? Why should we study this chapter? The purpose of this chapter is, it is a story in which we introduce some basic concepts relating to production and this we do so through a story of a hypothetical village called Palampur. Here we are going to study that farming is the main activity in Palampur, whereas several other activities such as small scale manufacturing, dairy, transport, etc. are carried out on a limited scale. These production activities need various types of resources, natural resources, man-made resources, human effort, money, etc. As we read through the story of Palampur, we will learn how various resources combine to produce the desired goods and services in the village. Students, let me introduce and take you around to Palampur. Palampur is a well connected with neighboring villages and towns. Palampur is an imaginary village. Let us visit this place. But before I take you to Palampur, let me show you a video which I've taken from the movie Upkar. I want all of you to see this song, enjoy the song and I am going to use this song as my teaching aid. I 
जान की तरह हर खेत सजे जान की तरह हर खेत सजे मेरे देश की धरती सोना उगले उगले हैं हीरे मोती मेरे देश की धरती टॉकिंग अबाउट पालमपुर पालमपुर इज वेल कनेक्टेड विद नेबरिंग विलेजेस एंड टाउन्स इट हैज फेयरली वेल डेवलप्ड सिस्टम ऑफ रोड्स ट्रांसपोर्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इरिगेशन स्कूल्स एंड हेल्थ केयर रायगंज इज अ बिग विलेज which is almost about 3 kilometers from palampur and all weather roads connect the village to raiganj and further on to the nearest small town of shahpur transport like bullock carts tongas bogies motor vehicles like motorcycles jeeps trucks tractors are seen on the roads further when i throw more light on this village This shows this village has about 450 families belonging to several different castes. Now in this village there are 80 upper caste families and these families they own majority of the land in the village. Their houses of these upper caste people are quite large and they are made of brick and cement plastering. On the other hand the SCs that is the scheduled castes or the dalits they comprise one third of the population. and these people they live in a corner one particular corner of the village in and in much smaller houses some of which are of mud and straw most of the houses have electricity connections Elect electricity powers all the two wells in the fields and is used in various types of small business this means that the people of the village are using electricity both in agriculture purpose and even for the business purpose palampur also has two primary schools and one high school there is a primary health care center which is run by the government and one private dispensary where the sick are treated the story of palampur an imaginary village will take us through the different types of production activities in the village In India in the villages across the whole country farming is the major production activity the other production activities which are referred to as non farm activities include small manufacturing transport shopkeeping etc we shall take a look at both these types of act activities after learning a few general things about production one very important question that comes to my mind is why do we produce goods to answer this question let me explain it to you we do so to satisfy our demands man has many needs and to fulfill these needs we take help of the resources which are available to us these thus become the inputs which are needs to produce goods and services for us means these are the goods and services which are made from the resources which are available around us here we are going to see a flow chart that will show the inputs needed to produce goods and services The aim of production is to produce the goods and services that we want. There are four requirements for production of goods and services. The first main requirement is land. The second requirement is labor. The third requirement is physical capital. In physical capital there are two types, fixed capital and working capital. The fourth requirement is human capital. Now my question is how do we explain or understand these four requirements i'm going to take this further and explain them in the next few slides
the first requirement is land and other natural resources such as water, forests and minerals. The second requirement is labor, that is people who will do the work. Some production activities require highly educated workers to perform the necessary tasks. Other activities require workers who can do manual work. Each worker is producing the labor necessary for production. <clears throat> the third requirement is physical capital, that is the variety of inputs that are required at every stage during production. What are the items that come under physical capital? Let's study this in detail. When we talk about physical capital, it comprises of fixed capital and working capital. What is fixed capital? Fixed capital includes tools, machines, buildings, which means that tools and machines may range from very simple tools such as a farmer's plow to even more sophisticated machines such as generators, turbines, computers, etc. Tools, machines, buildings can be used in production over many years. That is why it is called as fixed capital. Raw material and money in hand make working capital. Production requires a variety of raw materials such as yarn used by the weaver and clay used by the potter. Also, some money is always required during production to make payments and buy other raw items. Raw materials and money in hand are called working capital. There is a fourth requirement too. You will need knowledge and enterprise to be able to put together land, labor and physical capital and produce an output either to use yourself or to sell in the market. This these days is called human capital. Every production is organized by combining land, labor, physical capital and human capital which are known as factors of production. As we read through the story of Palampur, we will learn more about the first three factors of production. For convenience, we will refer to the physical capital as the capital in this chapter. Now when we talk about farming in Palampur, the first important point is that land is fixed. What does this mean? Farming is the main production activity in Palampur, which you already know. 75% of the people who are working are dependent on farming for their livelihood. They could be farmers or farm laborers. The well-being of these people is closely related to production on the farms. But remember that there is a basic constraint in raising farm production. Now what is that constraint? Land area under cultivation is practically fixed. Since 1960 in Palampur, there has been no expansion in land area under cultivation. By then, some of the wastelands in the village have been converted to cultivable land. There exists no further scope to increase farm production by bringing new land under cultivation. When we when we talk about farming in Palampur, the first major concern was that the land is fixed. Now, when the land is fixed, then is there any way one can grow more crops on the same land? Let's find an answer to this question. We'll find out the answer by studying the agricultural seasons. 